Up next, we have reflections of functions. So the idea of a reflection really can be seen with integers on a number line. It might be a little bit easier to see it this way initially. So here's our basic number line. Imagine we have this, this value, you know, positive 4. Then if I think of the number negative 4, what it actually ends up being, you can think of that essentially as a reflection. If I took this, you know, positive 4, if I started here and went 4 units to the right, well, if I started in the same spot and went 4 units to the left, that would be a reflection of positive 4 over to negative 4. The way we do that mathematically is if I take my positive 4, and if I multiply it by negative 1, that ends up creating negative 4. That's sort of the mechanical process of creating a reflection mathematically. We just take whatever we have initially, and we multiply it by negative 1. Okay, I take 4, I multiply it by negative 1, and that reflects it over the 0 down to negative 4. I could have 2, and of course, if I reflected that, multiplied it by negative 1, that would give me negative 2 down here. And, you know, the same idea. I could have 5, multiply it by negative 1, that gives me negative 5, and, and so on. So the idea is that this, you know, the 4 is the same distance there to there. The 2, if I reflect that, it ends up being down there, the same distance, and the same idea with the 5. So just like integers can be reflected over the 0 by multiplying by negative, the same thing can happen with functions. Okay. Functions can be reflected over the axes, so over the x or y axis, with the same idea, by multiplying with the multiplication by negative 1. So it's the same process, the exact same mechanics actually, multiply by negative 1, and it creates the same effect of reflecting it over some certain line. We're not going to use a zero line with functions, we're going to use either the y-axis or the x-axis. So there's two, really for us, two kinds of reflections, vertical and horizontal. So for vertical, you know, given any function, y equals f of x, then a vertical reflection, which is over the x-axis, can be executed by multiplying <clears throat> the function by negative 1. So this is a vertical reflection over the x-axis. So if our function is like this, then I would multiply it by negative 1, and it would look like that. It would reflect over the horizontal line, over the x-axis. It's a little weird, it's wordy, because it's a vertical reflection reflecting over the horizontal axis. So it's a vertical reflection, it's reflecting vertically, up and down. It's reflecting vertically. Mechanically, really, to do that, we just multiply all the y-coordinates by negative 1. Because remember, we're going to track all this with points. We're not going to do it just by drawing ran not random sketching, but we can't do it through sketching because it's just too difficult to, to communicate our solutions. So we're going to do it using the coordinates. So mechanically, all we have to do is multiply our y values by negative 1. So sort of in this example here, all my x values would stay the same. It's just my y values would be multiplied by negative 1. So instead of you know going uh, over here and up to this point, I would go over here and down to that point. Or instead of going here and up to that point, I would go here and down to that point. So the over part stays the same. It's just instead of going up, I'm, I'm heading down. So that's what that multiplication by negative 1 does. Simple illustration here. Suppose I have the point 2, 4. If I multiply the y values by negative 1, it just becomes 4 times negative 1 which is obviously negative 4. So that's really all we're, we're talking about. Horse, or sorry, The x value stays the same. It stays along this line, basically. It's just the y values get multiplied by a negative. Similar idea here. You know, if I have the blue one here, suppose I'm at you know, this point here, that's 4. Looks like that's 4, 2. That point would now have to become down here, 4, uh, negative 2, or the bracket there, 4, comma, negative 2. Interesting to see, this point here, say it's like, whatever, 3 and uh, 0, that would stay 3, 0, right? The point 3, 0 um, would stay, well, it's not 3, 0, it's probably, like, you know, 3.3 .3 or something, but let me go closer, sorry. Say it's 3.3, 3, comma, 0, 
Okay. If I multiply the y values by negative 1, it just stays 3.3 comma 0. So anything on the actual axis doesn't actually go anywhere, which kind of makes sense, right? It kind of reflects its way. It kind of reflects its way sort of over this, this axis. So a quick sketch of that, and given some basic function uh, here, sketch the reflection. So all I'm going to do is take the y values and I'm going to multiply them by negative 1. So this negative 4, 5 becomes negative 4, negative 5. And 0, 1 becomes 0, negative 1, and so on. 2, 2 becomes 2, negative 2. 5, 7 becomes 5, negative 7. I want to point this point out here again. 3.5 and 0 doesn't move anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere because 0, multiplying 0 by negative 1, just stays 0 itself. And you can see, I mean, if you look at that, you can kind of see that reflection idea. You can kind of see, you know, if I had this initial function, if I just sort of just twist it over like that, you can kind of see how, you know, that line, you can kind of see the idea on the reflection, why they use that, why they use that word. Uh, secondly, the horizontal reflection. So the horizontal, that's just left and right. Uh, given y, given a function, y equals f of x, a horizontal reflection, that's over the y-axis, can be executed with uh, y equals f at negative x. So in this case, the negative is attached right to the x. So mechanically, we multiply all the x coordinates by negative 1. So now how do we keep this straight? Because it's real subtle, the difference. And you say, well, how do I know if it's vertical or horizontal? And that's a good question. Probably the best way to go is if, the, if that negative sign is attached right to the x, like in this case. See the negative is right, right with the x. Okay, on the previous one, I'll bring it up here. See how the negative was kind of out front? So it's negative, and then you have the function. So this is like... You have the function to execute to calculate f of x, so you work it out, and then you just multiply it by a negative. Okay, with the horizontal, it's the negative is tucked in the x. You have to actually multiply the x values by the negative first, and then you have the whole function to deal with. Okay, so it actually is a different situation. It's real, real subtle, um, that placement of that negative sign, but that's that's what's happening. So. In this case, we just multiply the x values by a negative 1. So an example here, um, you know, we see this idea of a horizontal um, reflection. If I have the, the it's a, a parabola here, it kind of reflects over the line um, this way. So this, it would flip over and, and look like that. That's sort of the idea. You know, we have a spot here, AB. That will become negative AB. I just multiply the x value by negative 1. That's all that's happened. Here's an exponential model, y equals 2 to the x. I've multiplied the x by negative 1. It's, kind of, it's really it's tucked in there, that negative 1. That's done this, that reflection that's occurred. So as an example here, uh, sketch y equals f at negative x. So all I'm going to do is multiply my x values by negative 1. So I see this negative 4 becomes positive 4, and this negative 2 becomes positive 2, and so on. This point here, 0, 1, stays 0, 1, right, of course, because if I have 0, 1, if I multiply my x value by negative 1, well, 0 times negative 1 is still 0. It doesn't change. So that point doesn't move. And then this negative 5, negative 7 becomes 5, 7. And here you can, you can kind of see the idea of the, of the reflection this way with the values. Sometimes you're going to see both of them at once. I mean, eventually we're going to tie all these in together, but we don't have to get there yet. But yeah, you could have a vertical and a horizontal um, transformation occurring at the same time, which is possible. Okay, that's it. Take a look at page 110.